back in the TV. Dave on green on, Telefish Kirky, Tommy on Saw a lot her in it, some green on, uh, Tubbery on Delnick, uh, Sunday's Well, music department on uh, up on Sunday's Well. Uh, and today on the show, we have a very, very special guest, Connell Creedon. Hello, Joe, Woo! thank you very much. How are you today? Again. Very good, all together. And as I say, that walk up this hill it really sort of got the blood flowing, so I'm back with it, Chan. Good, good. Okay. So, what are you going to perform for us today? I'm going to do thing? two very short pieces. Uh, one is basically. Um, uh, it's a guy who can smell his way around the city with his eyes closed and by the distinctive smells in different places that carry him on like a relay. And the second piece is the advice a brother who wouldn't be too eloquent gives his sister when she stood up, when she comes home from a date where, you know, the other guy never turned up. So. And in Cork, being stood up is called? Getting a 50. Getting a 50. I yeah. never heard that before in my life. Well, you know, can I, I'll just say, it, uh, seriously, two weeks ago I got a back massage because my shoulder was gone and the woman said, um, come back next week if you want, if you need one or another one. And I said, well, I don't really want to give you a 50. So I'd phone you. And then she thought, she wasn't cocky, I didn't realise it. And she was looking and I thought, she thinks I'm talking about don't want to give her the money. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so when I got home, I phoned her, right? So the 50 actually cost me a 60. So she brought up next to 10 and just, okay, no 50, make it 50. Okay, very nice. Very Sorry. good, very good. Well, take it away, so. Okay. Very much. Very much. Follow your nose. <clears throat> a sleepy Saturday morning on Half Moon Street, and just around the corner, Christmas. I'm walking off a bit of self-inflicted pain, you know how it is. Three days on the Rantan, three whole days drinking me seasonal bonus, you know how it is when the belly's had a skinful, the mind is willing, but the body is never well, that's how it is. Just out for a scove, myself on my own, no particular place to go, just, just following me nose. Just follow your nose. That's what my granda used to do. A great man for following his nose was my granda. I mean, mother's soul. He could find his way to work blindfolded, all the way from his front doorstep up on Dublin Hill, down into the belly of the city, just, just by following his nose. The first thing that hit my granda and he leaving the house, it'd be the thick country smell of the cattle from the dealer's fields beyond the grotto in Blackpool. Led on like a, like a bull by the ring, he'd close his eyes and follow his nose, past the stale stench of last night's stout and cigarette smoke from the string of pubs along Dublin Street, past the Glen Hall, the full length of Thomas Davis Street, and with the first hint of crusty bread coming from the ovens of Cuthbert's Bakery over in Great Room of Bryan Street, he'd know he was at Blackpool Church. Then the sweet smell of molten sugar. The Shawleys making toffee apples up in Gerald Griffin Street would carry him past the oak casks of the distillery and onto the water course road. A pleasure. A pleasure cut short by the piercing, deathly, toxic, foul cloud coming from the slaughterhouse off Denny's Lane. But then, just for a whiff of a second, the subtle scent of sherbet drifting down from Linehan's sweet factory would carry him past the putrid pelts of the tannery and onto the first taste of human waste at Paul Raddy. Turning right onto Leitrim Street, and there'd be no mistake in the warmth of the moist malt of brewing stout billowing from Murphy's stack. He knew then he was on the right track, so he'd put the hands into the pockets and whistle, whistle all the way from Paul Reddy Harbour to the home farm stores, eyes wide shut. And though still out of sight, at the corner of Pine Street, the River Lee and Carroll's Quay would come into scent. High at low tide, low at low tide. He wouldn't turn left or right, but keep straight on to Three Points Corner where Devonshire Street, Leitrim Street, Coburg Street melt into one. He'd stay right on track, being passed from scent to scent, like a baton in a relay race, spurred on by the aromatic blending of Moore's vegetables, Griffin's shoemakers, Noreen's apple tarts. Must be Friday, because there's Kipper's in Credence and O'Connell's butchered beef or Sullivan's cured bacon. At Falvey's Corner, he'd stop. Stop dead. Struck by a tidal wave of fishy smells from the Baltimore stores, enough to knock a horse. And for the first time on his scove, my granddad opened his eyes, looked back at the eastern face of Shandon, where half past seven means 25 to eight. Then, turning right onto Bridge Street, the fine wines and exotic spice of Madden's would carry him across Patrick's Bridge, through the gateway of the city, all the way to work, just, just by following his nose. Thank you very much. Out the far side. Can I give the second one a shot? This is a... Um, <clears throat> a 
basically a girl gets a 50, boyfriend doesn't turn up, he go, she goes home, her brother, who is a bit sort of not too eloquent, gives her this advice. He's, he notices her mascara is a bit smudged and she's home a bit early. So this is what he says. <clears throat> Do you know, sis love, I just don't know what to say to you. I'm not going to tell you there's plenty more fish in the sea because that's the last thing that you want to hear, but, but there is though. There's more fish in that sea than you could shake a stick at, but no, 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 I'm not going to tell you that. See, from where you're standing, there's only one fish for you. But out there, out there is a vast ocean, sis love, I'm telling you, sis love, and swimming around in that ocean, you has every class of warm-blooded, cold-blooded, scaly and slimy article you could think of. There's your flatfish, your blowfish, your jellyfish, fish with thick shells, fish with no backbone. You has your sharks, you has your sea snakes and your mullets. And of course, you'll always have the old octopus and they're stretching out their slimy tentacles, pawing at anything that passes. But you mark my words, sis love, do you hear me? Any fella, any fella that leave my sister, my beautiful sis, standing there waiting on the side of the street is nothing. Nothing but a bucking pollock. Woo! Out the far side, in one go. That was brilliant, Sigurdy. that was brilliant. So tell us, what are you up to now at the moment um, with your writing? Well, Chris, I've just... I finished a book last November, but there was another book that I'd been working for a long, long time over the last maybe 10 years while I was writing various plays and things, and I've just nailed that two weeks ago. So it's a novel, it's sort of, so in the past, I've, the other books have been short stories, a novel, a history book, uh, a collection of three plays, but this is my second novel, so even though, so it's, it's a big deal for me really, you know, and um, so I've just sent that off last week, and uh, the reaction so far is very good to it, so I'm thrilled, you know, um, uh, that's, exactly where I am yeah and what about then would you tour uh, will you go on tour with uh, you know or, or go and well, do some reci recitations of it or the, 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 all the touring things? I do really is with the plays really you know like I, I find you get invited to read and that's great but that's you know like you know you're there for you know, it's a guest half an hour but, yeah. an hour yeah but the, the tour thing is usually when you get like a you know a whole play together an actors cast uh, you know the whole thing it's like a circus and that's it's brilliant in its own way, right? But the only thing is you can't, it, it takes you away from what you sh want to be doing, which is the writing, but it's still another great thing to be doing, right? So the plan is not to do tours for a while because I've done a bunch of them for the last, you know, that, that's why this book took so long, actually. It was uh, doing a lot of traveling around, you know, and brilliant, but you have to sit down at a desk now and again too, and that's what I've just done for the last year. And, Things are coming out, thanks. Well, well, congratulations that you've you, finished Joe. your uh, third novel. Well, sec yeah. second novel. novel yeah. And um, I'm looking forward to having an all read of that. Well, I'll tell you all about it later on, all right? Great. <laughs> it's um, easier than reading it. Gurv Mila Magus, thanks so much for taking the time to come on the balcony. Okay. Uh, check him out. Absolutely brilliant. Connell Creedon. And tune in again for another Balcony TV Cork. Slán Tamil. Sonny. Balcony TV.